Um, my name is Noelle Nelson. I am the B Building Assistant Principal and also the AP Coordinator here at Freedom. Um, I'm really excited to work with our AP teachers this year. Many of them um, you'll see a little bit later on, um, but to bring back AP night, that way we can let families know what offerings that we have, what course offerings we have, um, encourage students to challenge themselves and take those um, different AP classes that we have. So I'll go ahead and get started um, with the presentation. So the purpose of our AP courses um, is to start the students with some prep for their college classes. Um, it also does impress admissions officers. It'll strengthen the student's transcript. I'll go a little bit about um, what it does to their GPA in a few slides. Um, but they're also able to study at a higher level, something that they might be interested in. So they could be taking a class that they're super interested in, and then taking that AP class just takes them to the next level. And it also gets them a head start um, on college requirements. So if they're interested in that major, then they can get a head start on classes towards that major that they are looking to, uh, to do in college. So for their GPA, um, students do receive a weighted grade when they take an AP course. And this goes for a grade C or above. So if a student scores below a C, which includes a C minus, so a C minus, a D or an F, that added grade bump is not there. So they do have to get a C, which would normally be a 2.0, but in a AP level course, they would get three points for it. For B, instead of three points, it would be four, and for an A, they would get five points and sort of, instead of the traditional four points. So when in classes at school, in all classes, we generally have a timeline to add or drop classes within the first two weeks of the school year um, and or the semester. So this is the time when students often jump into a class and then either find out they don't want it or realize they should have taken a class and want to jump into it. So if that is your student or students, if you're listening to, if that's you, make sure that um, you do this within two weeks of starting this semester. A little bit about AP exams. So a lot of students often think AP courses, AP exams. So it is highly encouraged. We do not make it mandatory. Um, but it is highly encouraged for our students to take the AP exam. This does um, cost money, and I'll, uh, I think I have a slide for that, but that is separate from the AP class. The AP class does work towards getting students prepared for that exam, um, but it is separate. It is a test given by a college board, and it's a national test that all students in that AP course take actually at the same time. So if a class, let's say AP Chemistry takes their test on January 1st at 8 a.m., everybody across the United States takes their AP Chemistry tests at January 1st at 8 a.m. So it's a national test. Our teachers don't write the test, um, but they do prepare students to do well on it and um, Scores go range from one to five, and scores three, four, and five can be accepted at the colleges for college credits. Um, but make sure to check in with your counselors and the colleges you're, you are applying to to see if that works for that college. So speaking of fees, the general fee for exams um, are $95. Um, AP seminar is a bit higher. I believe it's about 130. Um, however, we do um, offer a fee reduction for our students. So uh, instead of charging our students 95, we charge 75 for the general exam. Um, if your family does qualify for the free and reduced lunch, then you would get an even further reduction of the $10. This is what we offered this year, so I don't want to guarantee this for next year, 
Um, but it is something that at Freedom, we like to offer our students and families because we know a $95 test can be a lot. Um, and many students take more than one. So we want to acknowledge that and make it as feasible for our families um, to afford the test and allow their students to take it. As far as the free and reduced lunch, I know for this year it was a little bit confusing um, and it might continue on with our school offering free lunch for everybody. Not everyone fills this out. So I do have to go by this in order to see who qualifies for the AP reduction. It is a form online and it does have to be filled out yearly. So if you filled it out this year, you'd still have to do it again um, for next school year. As far as the decision date, um, unfortunately, the decision date is pretty early, and that's the date that College Board decides on, not us at Freedom. I'm sure if it was up to us, we'd like to give our students a little bit more time to decide if they were ready to take the test, um, but College Board requires us to have students decide by the end of October. Um, if a decision, if they decide not to and change their mind later, then a $40 late fee is applied by College Board. So that's something that unfortunately we can't get around. Um, so we try to get as much information out to students and families so that way you're aware of the date, you kind of know what you're signing up for, um, and then go from there. Class registration. After this presentation, um, if you and your students are talking about it, um, our counselors start registration with our junior class tomorrow. Um, so they are already thinking about next school year. So that's why we wanted to get a little bit of a jump start. I know it's just one day, but um, get a jump start to the class registration by having our AP night tonight. Uh, counselors will be going into classrooms, and this is a time where they'll go over the course offerings um, and give your students their course request paperwork. That's when they will look over and, and be able to check and circle and choose the AP class that they want to take. So keep in mind that some AP classes do have prerequisites. What that means is that they need to, students need to take classes prior to entering the AP level course. Um, there are many, we do have a few classes, sorry, that do not require prereqs. So if your student has maybe never taken an AP course or is interested, um, we'll go over those ones. That way that might be a good starting point to get them um, to keep moving on in the AP level. We do ask though on those course request forms that they'll be getting from the counselors that when they are asking to go an AP course, if there is a prerequisite that their current teacher signs um, and initials that they, they're ready to, to go into the AP um, class. Um, that way they feel a little bit more confident. They know their, their teacher thinks that they're capable, so they know that they are prepared to take that test or that class, I'm sorry. The classes without a prerequisite, they would need to also speak with that teacher just to let them know uh, what classes they're currently taking, talk about um, what the teacher expects. That way they know, the teacher knows that they're ready um, to work hard that next year and that the student is ready uh, to move forward in that class. So these are some um, classes, this is not all of our listings, but these are some of our AP classes. Um, that, for instance, the intro level, those are classes that do not have prereqs. These um, can be taken, our human, AP Human Geography and AP um, Art History can be taken across multiple grade levels. Um, our AP World History is for our sophomores, but these classes do not have a class that is required prior to taking this class. The ones with prereqs, Again, this is not a complete list, but these are classes that do need other classes and um, to be taken prior to taking the AP um, class. Again, the teachers uh, will go over those specific requirements when we go over those individual classes. A level change. So this is one of those um, changes that can happen in those first few weeks of school. Um, some students enter an AP class and then 
decide it's not the class for them, they aren't ready for it, or they just can't do it, which is totally fine. Um, in those classes that have a level change, so we'll speak about AP World History, we also have general world history. So in those classes, um, we do allow the change up to nine weeks. So it is a long time um, to decide to make that change, but because there's a similar class just at a, at a slightly lower level, it's a general class instead of an AP, then we allow that switch on that large range of time. However, with classes that don't have level changes, such as AP Bio, AP Calculus, and AP Chemistry, um, those have a smaller window to change classes because an entirely new class has to be put into their schedule. We don't have a general biology class that matches the AP Bio level. Same with Chemistry and same with Calculus. So now we're going to go into an overview of each individual class. Um, when the class comes up, the teacher of that subject or a, a partner teacher who is going to cover for a teacher that couldn't make it tonight will be sharing about their class. Um, if you have questions, if you can hold them till we go into breakout rooms, and the teachers would be happy to answer your questions at that time. So first, we'll start with our science and math department. Hi. Oh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Uh, my name is Olga Kalaminska. I'm one of the AP statistics teachers. And statistics is uh, one of two AP math classes that is offered at Freedom. Uh, another one is AP Calculus. So statistics is a different kind of math. Um, and in statistics, we work with data. It's becoming one of the more popular classes at Freedom and at, on college campuses because everyone needs statistics because we are getting bombarded with all kinds of data, um, all kinds of research, and we need to know how to process all that. So. Uh, that's what we learn in AP statistics. Uh, you don't need to be super strong at math, but we do require a strong algebra two skills to succeed in AP stats. It's a math class, but you also need to have strong reading skills. Um, desire to learn challenging concepts. Um, and again, it's a different kind of math. So uh, a lot of students never seen or deal with the concepts of statistics think outside the box, uh, strong reading skills, work ethic as for any um, other AP course. And we recommend at least one previous AP class and AP exam just so that student knows what they're signing up for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's all I was going to say. <laughs> thank you. Perfect, thank you. All right. Um, I am John Wilmore. Um, I'm normally uh, the other AP statistics teacher. So hello if uh, you are thinking of joining up with me and Miss K for AP stats. But today I'm going to be talking about AP calculus. Um, so uh, when it comes to AP calculus, unlike AP statistics, it is uh, more of a pure math class. So it follows in the more, shall we say, traditional order of algebra two pre-calculus, and then AP calculus after that. So it deals generally with uh, changes in functions and areas like under curves and like. So it deals with things like factoring, solving equations, how graphs change like over time. Um, so calculus is extremely important if you're going into any of the engineering fields, technology fields, medical fields, mathematical fields, etc. So if you're thinking like, hey, I want to be a uh, STEM major, AP calculus is absolutely for you because you're definitely going to have to take it. Um, so when it comes to the kind of things you're going to you're going to face in AP calculus, the problems are going to be difficult. Imagine a pre-calculus or an AP calculus problem, but add a new depth uh, of change over time. 
Word problems are a big thing, not quite as much as AP statistics, but they're definitely there and definitely group work. Um, if you are uh, looking definitely at computer science, if you're looking at uh, anything like, if you look thinking like, hey, I wanna be a doctor, this is the class for you, most definitely. And I do believe we are offering both uh, AB and BC calculus this year. And I think that wraps it up. Thank you very much. Hello, I am helping to present on behalf of AP Bio. This is usually taught by Miss Luna, but she is not here. So she wanted me to relay some information that statistics is a really uh, helpful uh, class to take because of how often they're looking at um, data sets in AP Bio. Um, she recommends that you've taken at least one previous AP class, ideally one AP exam. The AP exam is not required, but it, she heavily encourages you to take it. Uh, some of the prereqs in this class are um, that you've gotten good grades in Living Earth, Chemistry, and then what's recommended is after taking AP Chemistry that you just go right into AP Bio um, because a lot of the chemistry we do in AP Chemistry will just kind of help you and continue on as you go into AP Biology. And that if you want to sign up for the class to go and see her, I believe she's in E211. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, so she can sign your course request sheets. Other than that, that's what she wanted me to relay. Hello, I'm John Sierra with AP Environmental Science. You can see it is also ROP slash AP. ROP stands for the Regional Occupation Program. So this is one of the very few classes that's ROP and AP for training, preparing students for college, but also training them for jobs that they could potentially get right out of high school. And um, in fact, one of the fastest growing industries in America is green jobs, like green, green energy. And that's something that we do train about and prepare students for. As you can see here in the pictures on the slide, uh, we do a lot of community service as part of our class. We have the garden behind the school for any students who are at Freedom or those who are familiar with the campus. My classroom is in I quad in the back of the school and then the garden is in just about 100 feet away. Um, you can see the prerequisites on the screen that show uh, algebra and living earth uh, would be pretty much the um, prereq prerequisites leading up to this class. But I also do see environmental science as a more of a capstone, a culmination of other science classes. If you've taken biology, chemistry, even physics, I feel like they all feed into environmental science, how everything connects. And we tap, we uh, pull from all of those different classes. Even if you haven't taken those classes, we'll find students in the class who have even statistics really help support us in our studies about the environment and population and growth. Um, <clears throat> So the description there says we're exploring the interactive nature of our place in the environment and finding solutions. It's really a problem solving kind of class uh, about how we are continuing to grow and using resources and looking for a way to make a positive change. Okay. And I'm back again. So I'm Ms. Fagiano. I teach AP chemistry. Um, I have a QR code that you can scan for more kind of FAQs about AP chemistry and really a lot of the AP sciences. Um, so the re prereq for this course is that you did really well in your chemistry class, um, that you're enrolled in Algebra 2 or you've already passed it. And that's just because a lot of the math that we do in AP chemistry is applied algebra two um, concepts. Hopefully if you're taking it, you're interested in science and math. 
Uh, we do a lot of lab investigations and chemical calculations to solve problems. Um, so there are lab write-ups that kind of come with that. Um, and then at the end of the year, um, you get to do kind of a research project and we have kind of a poster session about different uh, topics in chemistry that students research throughout the quarter. Hi, uh, I'm David Renane. I'm the AP Physics One teacher. Um, so uh, need a, at least a B or uh, B average or better in math, uh, algebra two or higher. Um, physics in the universe, our physics class is not a requirement, but it can be helpful to take it. Uh, everything that we do cover in physics one, it gets covered um, or, or everything you would need from physics one is I, I go over again in AP physics as we go. Uh, we cover the fundamental principles of uh, physical phenomenon from a mathematical perspective and doing labs as well. Um, as stated with uh, calculus, most uh, science, computer science, pre-medical majors, engineering, of course, all depend on prerequisite of a physics class as well. And this is a great introduction for that. Um, it does take uh, hard work. You need to be strong in your math uh, it is algebra break, algebra based, um, does not require calculus. Uh, it just, you just need to be strong with your algebra. And uh, we do work with word problems a lot as well. Thank you. Now we'll move into our AP social sciences. All right, good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, just looking at the participant number, what a great turnout, so. That looks awesome, over 130 people. Well done, um, it's neat. So my name is Mr. Hollister, Joe Hollister. I teach um, AP Economics here at Freedom. Uh, economics is a unique class. For one, um, it's only one semester. So the, the information that we go through, it seems like it's at a pretty fast pace to get through it all in one semester. Um, we talk a lot about economic theory, and economic practice from a macroeconomic level. So it's a macroeconomic class. And it's a really exciting time to be studying economics as we all look around and see what's going on um, in our country with our finances and looking at recent inflation data, all kinds of stuff. So in the class, we look at a lot of scenarios um, and go through a lot of problems. Um, with the goal to learn economics and as well, like all these other classes to prepare for the AZ, uh, AP exam as well. Um, our class does a lot of graphing and modeling um, and we tell stories and, and try to make predictions uh, when we study our economics. Uh, one of the basic concepts of economics, as many of you may remember, is that economics is about trade-offs. So when one decision is made, what did we give up to do that? And we look at the outcomes, uh, just as a small history lesson, macroeconomics comes from what happened during the Great Depression in the United States and the goal that a country as large as the United States doesn't ever repeat such a nasty depression that we went through all those years ago. So what I have is up there. Again, my name is Mr. Hollister and I look forward to um, fielding any questions later on in the day. Thank you. And AP Economics is one of our two classes that is a semester long. All other AP classes are year long. All right, I'm Mr. Krieger. How are you today? Hope you're having a delicious day. Think about this. This is my next year, my 29th year teaching. When students come into AP Government and AP Econ, they have a semester class. It's the first real college class level. You know what you got a semester. The students come in. It's really a poli-sci class, but it's an exciting class to be in. And if you have any questions at all, have them come by and see me personally to ask questions, as well as later on in this, in this informational uh, time. The reality is this, is that the students come in and they basically look at poli-sci and we take government and prepare for a test. As I was building a test for uh, on Friday and I realized that, you know what, along the way the students say, wait a minute, it goes as fast as, and I have students from Mr. Hollister this year and we switch. It's kind of awesome. 
So the bottom line is I could talk about politics forever and it will push all your buttons. And I don't want to do that. But sign up for my class. It's exciting. And hopefully I will offend you and you will be offended as well. Thank you so much. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Courtney Phillips. I apologize. I have no voice, um, but I'm excited to be here to talk about AP Human Geography. Um, my class is unique as it is the only class as an AP that is available to freshmen, um, but all the way up through 12th grade. And so I really encourage um, upperclassmen to take this class as they have so much background knowledge that they've gotten in world cultures, world history, and then even US history that then helps them prepare for our class. Um, the word geography usually scares students away. Um, we don't stare at maps for the entire year. What human geography is, is we're looking at the why of where. How does geography affect our everyday life? And once we start going through the class, students will start to see, oh, agriculture is geography in all of the buildings that we have, culture is geography, religion is geography. We talk about migration, the industrialization of countries, um, women's rights is geography. And so as we're going through, again, my class is unique that we're not looking at the past, we're more looking at contemporary issues now and how they've been affected by events in the past. Um, because it is a ninth through 12th grade available class, there are no prerequisites. I do recommend previous AP experience, but if you are a ninth grader coming in, not required. Um, I do look for hopefully A's or B's in middle school and um, in other previous history classes. Um, but I really am looking for all students of all backgrounds, all grades, um, because it's really helpful when we have kids from ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, all working together and really being able to collaborate um, for the subject. Plus, it's lots of fun. I mean, who doesn't want to look at maps and learn about what's happening in the world now? And it really helps them look at the big picture. I feel like so many of them look at, oh, this is my little bubble in Oakley. But it really starts to get them to see what's out there. Um, I'm in room C210 if they have any questions, or um, I'll be here to answer questions later. Thank you. Hey, folks. I hope everyone's doing well tonight. I'm Mr. Clark. I teach AP Psychology. Um, the other AP Psychology teacher is Mr. Lee. Um, uh, most students take AP or can take intro psych in college, and AP Psych passing the AP Psych test gets them the credit for intro psych. So it's a, it fills a big hole for their gen ed or liberal arts requirements. Um, so that's a major push for, for taking uh, AP Psych in high school. Um, there is no prerequisite. It is useful if the student took Psych within society beforehand, but it's not necessary. Um, Mr. Lee and I teach the class from a very scientific perspective. Uh, some of the questions that you see on the screen right now are speak towards some of the things that we cover in class. Psychology is very broad. Uh, topic. So we go everything from methods in science to uh, statistics to talking about consciousness and the brain, uh, memory and attention and learning and conditioning, uh, up to talking about personality and the development of personality, development of the brain and behavior over time, um, and then into social psychology and uh, psychological disorders. Mr. Lee and I will be in the breakout room afterwards. So if you have any questions, you can join us there. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Appel. Uh, I teach uh, AP World History or World History Modern. Um, this class is open to incoming sophomores, uh, so it does fulfill your sophomore uh, history class requirement. Um, although there are no official prerequisites, I'm looking for A's and B's uh, leading up to sophomore year. Um, there are a few things as well that you should be aware of. We do quite a bit of reading, uh, writing, and analysis with primary source documents. Uh, so as you guys come into the class and, or as you guys come into the breakout session, um, these are the three kind of primary skills that we'll need, reading, writing, um, and at least an open mind uh, for analyzing uh, different topics. Uh, we cover about a thousand years of history. So we go from the year to, uh, 1200 all the way to present day, and we cover all of the topics of almost all of the countries um, in the world. 
Yeah, come see me, Mr. Appel, E204. Hi, everyone. My name is Mr. Cooper. I'm the AP US History teacher here. Uh, AP US History is definitely a continuation of the uh, skills that are taught in AP World History. So if this, your students are doing well in AP World, I highly recommend that they stick with it for the junior level AP History class that is AP US History. Um, I Definitely, I'm encouraging students that did not take world history that are that are interested AP world history that are interested in history to give it a chance, uh, see if they can um, see if they like it. Uh, so yeah, the prerequisite is a grade of C or better in world history, but realistically, you know, an A in a world history class or an A, B, or C in AP world history would be a very good step. Uh, one difference between AP US and the regular US history class is that AP US history covers everything. So we start with, uh, you know, discovery of the New World by Christopher Columbus in 1492 and go all the way up to the present day. Whereas in regular history, it's the standards are focused on post Civil War. Um, so it moves uh, significantly faster than the regular history class, but um, it is a good challenge, so I'm encouraging everyone to take it. So yeah, if you uh, want to ask any questions, just ask me in the breakout rooms. Next up, we'll cover our AP languages and AP arts. Um, hello, my name is Megan Valley, and I teach AP um, English language and composition. That's uh, AP 11 or AP 3 or junior year um, for our students. Uh, junior year is a focus on rhetoric, argument. It's breaking down the arguments of others and learning how to develop arguments in your own um, way to convince people to have an open mind, look from a different perspective, uh, have some fresh and new ideas. There are no prerequisites. All are welcome and encouraged to join. We focus a lot on improving writing skills and close reading skills so that you look at the details of what is written how it's written and look at possible motivations for why it's written. Um, it covers everything from, we have some prose that are as old as Socrates and we have some modern prose that are published the year that the course runs because there's always great stuff being written. Uh, it will satisfy an English 100 course in college and it sets students up nicely for skills throughout the many different subject matters because we're working on elevating your reading skills and your writing skills and your ability to persuade. And then you can see the QR code that Ms. Fagiano was kind enough to put up for me if you want more details. And then next is still me again. This is um, AP English 12 is AP English literature and composition. It covers the fiction element of English so we read plays, novellas, novels, short stories, poetry, and we use literature as an examination of the human condition. It's an opportunity for students to expand their perspective of the world beyond what they experience every single day. We build upon skills that we developed first in AP language, but by no means do you have to take AP language to be successful in AP literature. Anyone who is willing to join us will be supported through the process. That's what we do and that's why we're here to help you and guide you and encourage you along your path and to give you the best set of skills that you could possibly have to move forward in your next direction post high school. So please come see me in B208 if you have any questions about either AP English course or find me in the breakout room. Buenas noches, my name is Lisette Nuno and I teach AP uh, Spanish. There are no prerequisites because there are different ways to um, be able to take the class. Spanish speakers one and two, uh, Spanish four. So please have those teachers sign the form if you wanna take AP. Um, it's not necessary, but it's highly recommended because you're expected to already know um, the language. In addition, um, if you're in Spanish three, 
uh, you could sometimes take um, AP Spanish. You could skip a year. Uh, with COVID and distance learning, if you're in Spanish 3 this year, you really do not have the foundations to skip a year unless you're a native speaker and you come and see me. Um, so if you're in Spanish 1 right now, um, think about it in Spanish 3. You might be able to do it, but at the moment, um, you really don't have the foundation to, to skip a year. Um, so please have your Spanish uh, speaker two teachers sign in your Spanish four if you would like to. Seal of biliteracy is really important. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard, we can talk about that in the breakout room. Uh, there's a lot of, you need to fulfill a lot of requirements, but you have to finish the fourth year. You don't have to take four years of a language. You just have to fill, um, finish the fourth year, that being AP Spanish or Spanish four. Spanish will be spoken by the students and the teacher at all times. 25% um, of the test is speaking formally and informally. So you, we are constantly speaking in the class. So you can't be shy. I mean, you can be shy, but you're gonna have to be speaking to your table mates. We can make accommodations when you can do your presentations just with me if you have those accommodations. But you have to be willing to talk to your neighbors um, and talk to the class because this it's heavily, your test is heavily on speaking. So if you have any questions, please see me in the breakout session. Adios. Hello, I'm Laura Dwyer. Um, so AP Studio Art, we create, right? What do we create? Pretty much whatever you want. We do what's called a stay investigation. And um, you, we're going to do about 20 pieces. You only need 15, but it's um, with one focus. So you have to have a strength in at least two to three mediums. You don't really know all the mediums and technical skill. You also need to know about composition, how to organize your artwork um, and have something to say visually. What do you want to communicate to the world um, in a visual way? And we do a lot of communication. We do a lot of talking. We do a lot of writing. And it's all centered about what you are saying in your artwork. And um, with that being said, that's one reason why, because there is a lot, everything builds on top of it, is you do need to have beginning, intermediate, and advanced art. I do teach advanced art. So um, I know exactly how to prepare you for um, AP. Um, you do have to be a senior. That's it. So AP Seminar is a part of a program that College Board was approached by colleges and universities and they said students are coming into the university level and they are lacking some key skills. They need to know how to complete advanced research. They need to know how to deliver sophisticated presentations. And that's what we do in AP Seminar. Um, the interesting part about AP Seminar that is appealing to most students is that students get to choose the topic that they want to study in order to demonstrate the skills that they learn in class. So there is, as Ms. Nelson was saying earlier, um, the exam for AP Seminar is different than other exams. It's not only the test in May, like all other exams, and Ms. Dwyer can speak to it because her exam is just a touch different also. In AP Seminar, you write two papers, you give two presentations, and you take an exam. So there's more to it than, hey, it's May 7th and you have an AM or a PM exam like other classes. So you do have to be um, enrolled in the class and participating throughout the whole process. But we show you the skills, or I, should, I show you the skills, and you choose the topic, you research what is your passion, you write about what you want to learn about, you investigate and you explore, and I support you in the process. And so that's a great appeal for many students is finally, what do you mean? I get to choose what I learn. I get to direct my own learning. I have the opportunity to explore a topic of my choosing. That's a novel concept for many AP classes. And they always have a good time and become a tight knit family by the end. Okay, so we saved the best class for last. <laughs> mine is the one you want, take mine. Um, AP Art History is uh, a art class for the non-artists. So if you're a future AP student 
and you want to get your fine arts requirements covered for college admission, this is the best course in the art department for that because there are no prerequisites. You can actually take AP Art History as a freshman if you want. Um, and it covers that F requirement for your college admissions. And you don't have to know how to draw. So that's kind of relief for people who are art scary or scared of art. Um, AP Art History is the only history course at Freedom High School that goes all the way back to the beginning of mankind and covers every single continent and every single concept all the way up till the contemporary day. So it's got the largest stretch of time. The only downside I would say for those of you that are history buffs is that the AP Art History class does not count as a social studies credit. So you would still have to take a history class your sophomore year. So let's say, for example, you're taking my AP Art History class, you would take it at the same time that you're taking uh, AP World. And that's fantastic because kids who take both often succeed in both classes because our content often weaves in and out a little bit and you get to um, discuss some of the same concepts and same historical periods, but with a different perspective. Um, in art history, we have a list of 250 artworks that every student memorizes. So at the end of the year, you know the names of the artists, you know um, when they were alive, you talk about the form and the function and the content and the context of every single art piece on that list of 250. And we go deep dive into each and every one. So you'll know why Van Gogh painted what he painted, when he painted it, what was going on in France when he was alive and um, all the stuff around his life story. Not just the biographies of famous artists, we also talk about wars and um, conflict and uh, economic issues and all sorts of religious concepts that affect artists and, and the time in which they were alive. There's a lot of writing in this class, do not get me wrong. It will be your favorite class, but it's a class that will kick your butt. So if you're looking for a tremendous challenge and you don't mind spending tons of time reading, um, AP Art History is a class for kids who can memorize things. So if you are a kid with a photographic memory, this is a class for you. But if you love art anyways, and you are an artist, AP Art History is just a really great way to study history through the lens of um, art making. We look at architecture, sculpture, painting, photography. Um, we'll study major buildings and sacred spaces and luxury goods, uh, you name it, we're gonna be touching on it. Um, plus, here's a great advantage. None of the other teachers mentioned this, but all the AP kids here, you guys have to remember, we're done working you in May, which means that you're going to get like four weeks of chill time. And if you're taking my class, that chill time's fun. We're doing artsy stuff. We're playing outside. We're doing sidewalk chalk. We're taking trips to the museums. Um, you know, so you take the hard classes, but then at the end of the school year, you're like, totally relaxing and, and laying back. And um, someone else just mentioned too, family. I mean, boy, your study groups become tight knit sisterhoods and brotherhoods of people who, I don't know, kind of like going through a war together. At the end of the year, you're like, man, we survived it. We should make t-shirts. Um, I survived AP Art History. And I can't wait to see you guys. I hope you all um, come by J103 to say hi. Um, I sent out a bunch of letters of invitation this week. So if you got one of those, I hope you sign up. And um, I will be in a breakout session if you have more questions. Thanks. Thank you. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and open the breakout rooms. Um, let's see if I did this right. They're all labeled by subject. And if you have questions for a particular teacher and their subject, um, go ahead and just enter into the room yourself. So I did put that you as participants can choose the room. That way you, if you have multiple questions for different subjects, you'll be able to move to different rooms. I will stay here in the main room. Um, so if you're not sure where to go, you can stay and I can help you out. Or if you just have general AP questions, um, I can help out as well.